on. Right, okay. Uh, it's down to your timer now. Right, okay. Hey, Siri. Time, 28 minutes. Let's go. I feel like it's been a long time since I've heard the fake Fleetwood. Well, we've batch recorded a few, so it's been a, a while, it a bit has. out of practice. Yeah, I know. We might have forgotten how to do this, Scott. <laughs> Anything could happen in the next hour or so. Well, let's certainly hope not. Yeah, let's see what happens. <laughs> It'll all be good fun. It will, it will. Uh, welcome back to the Creative Pursuit podcast, brought to you by the team at Northern Powerhouse Media. My name's Adam Burkett. And I am Scott Edwards. Um, and we are on episode number eight. Number eight, yeah. Eight already, Scott. We have flown through these it's gone so quickly from the amount of time we spent talking about it before actually (laughs) doing it and then actually doing them now it's possible that we talked more about our podcast (laughs) than we have on our podcast and the balance is still not yeah um but yeah it's been fun so far hasn't it very good fun yeah um a couple of fantastic episodes in the last few weeks as well yep um and some more really welcome feedback from people who've been listening to the show which has been lovely to hear so keep those uh, messages Come into us if you if you're enjoying it, or if you're not enjoying it. In fact, just tell us if you're not enjoying it. Yeah, yeah t- and yeah. tell us. Don't just say you, d- you think it's awful. <laughs> I if you, hate this. If you could probably, if you could qualify it with, we uh, we'd like to hear more of this or less of this or that. Cannon breaks really annoying or whatever. That Constructive would be, criticism. That's exactly right. That's yeah. exactly right. So here we are, episode eight. Eight um, is a great one for us. We are delighted to welcome to the podcast this week jill bishop who is a marketing ace um jill is a marketing strategist um who's got more than 20 years in the industry working in small businesses or medium business in variety of different sectors she's very passionate about helping business owners to get organized so that they can be visible in the right place and i have been on the end of Jill kicking me up the arse to do things. She's been fantastic at making sure that I do my marketing. Um, She's got a fantastic creative mind and enables businesses to build relationships with their clients and customers. What this means is that the marketing that they do is less overwhelming, worthwhile, and is focused on getting results. So Bill, uh, sorry, Bill? (laughs) Bill. (laughs) What an intro. Sure. Should we pretend that, that didn't so happen? so rude. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Bill has just left the room about That's five what it is. Ago. It's a Freudian. <laughs> um, so Jill's company is called Cherryoid Marketing, um, and she works based out of Cheshire and around the Northwest. Um, and the service that she provides is flexible in designing manageable and realistic marketing plans through to actually getting stuck in and working within the businesses. Um, so, Jill, welcome. Thank you. I'm so sorry I'm to, for calling you Bill. <laughs> That's a real faux pas. It's a shame we don't edit these podcasts, oh, really, because I'll be it? able to edit it out. But um, oh, it's just what's and all, I'm afraid. Fine. It's going up on YouTube as <laughs> I'll, Bill. I'll be known as Bill. <laughs> it will stick. It will. <laughs> it will. So, um, anyway, listen, thanks so much for coming. Thanks we've, for we, we've been talking for a while about getting you on the show, haven't we? Yeah. Um, this came about with Jill and I having a cup of tea uh, over breakfast and you listened to a couple of the episodes and you had some fantastic things to say about creativity um, that you were almost viciously shoving into my inbox to make sure we talked about. <laughs> and I mean that in the nicest possible way. Like these are really, really great topics and I thought n- we have to get you onto the show. Um, so can you tell us or tell us and the listeners a little bit about your background and why creativity is in your life? Okay. Um, so... Where shall I start? I was always arty and crafty mm. as a kid. I'd, you know, give me a paintbrush and some paint and I'd paint something. Um, did art at college. I'd caught this dream I was going to be a graphic designer. Oh, was that the original path? Yeah. Uh, but when I was at college, I got run over and broke my arm. Is that oh. really? Yeah. Happened? So that's tricky for drawing. That's tricky for painting and drawing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So that uh, stopped so the graphic design dream, did it? Yeah, but also when I was doing it at college, I could tell it was going to be more computer-based. Right. And actually, I wanted to be making stuff and doing stuff, so... So you're a bit analogue when it comes to your yeah. artsy stuff, you're yeah. like holding although a paintbrush or... But although when I'm doing, creating stuff for clients, I can put a picture together and compose it and mm. stuff like that, or I can create um, a graphic or an infographic, so... I still use those skills and I still use Photoshop and Illustrator and things like that, but I, I wouldn't, 
I prefer mm. as a source of being creative and relaxing, I suppose, and doing it outside of work, I prefer doing physical, you know, that's yeah. actually yeah. creating something. That's yeah. interesting because when we had Ian on the other week, he was obviously a film photographer. Yeah. He's... He doesn't enjoy using light. He hates Photoshop. digital yeah. as yeah. well, you know. Yeah, yeah. and it, he talks a lot about um, the gear or the te- the tech being a barrier to creativity. Yeah, because there are limitations to it, aren't there? And you've got to learn that tool before right. you can it actually use it. It takes a long time it. to learn. Yeah. yeah. Whereas picking up a paintbrush, or yeah. you know, we've done it that since do we what, were what, young. What's child. in your mind, or you know, if you've got instructions that show you how to create something. Right. Right. So. Arts at college and that kind yeah. of stuff. Um, and then how did that then move into so work? So I was like, oh, I'm not going to do that now. And it, it was like, well, I can't just draw and paint for the rest of my life. And I think <laughs> my parents were like, um, what are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> I, it's funny, I remember having a similar conversation. <laughs> yeah, you want to be a musician, eh? <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do with that painting and drawing? <laughs> yeah. um, no, they were, they were very supportive, to be fair. But, you know, when you think that must have been a nightmare time for them because all of a sudden they were like, oh, I Jeez. know. Yeah. And I think we owe, we owe our parents yeah. a massive credit, don't they, yeah, for sticking do. behind us mm-hmm. yeah. as mad hatted creatives in, t- in our teens. Yeah. yeah. Actually, not telling us to go and become accountants or whatever. Yeah. That was not for me. No, I'd be, yeah. a, I'd be a very bad accountant. I would <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I thought I've always fancied being an event organizer. Yeah. Yeah. But not having I'm learning new things you about you, Jill. Um, but not having any qualifications, didn't go to uni. I then picked up the phone, picked up the yellow pages or the phone book as it was then, because yeah. you know, internet wanted to think. No. Um, and rang round every event company, PR agency, marketing agency in the area and said, I'm looking to get into this. Can you give me any tips how I can do it? And one of them, a PR agency, eventually rang me back and said looking for an office junior do you fancy coming for an interview and that's how i got my first job i love that oh. yeah i love the fact that you actually had the the guts and the you know to get out there and put <laughs> i mean because a yeah. lot of people don't do that no. a lot of people will just apply for a job via email or send someone a facebook but message or whatever no yeah, you know what I, no i know but even so actually picking up the phone and having the chutzpah to sort of say i'm looking to get into this industry i always i get quite a lot of emails from students and stuff like that and i always reply to them yeah because even if the answer is i can't help you at the moment you know but you know if you've got if you want some advice or whatever i think it's really important to kind of give yeah. back because we've all been in that position where you would just want an opportunity yeah yeah, yeah that's very um true. So yeah, that's yeah. A, that's a mega thing to get you started. Yeah, it was. So that was working in a PR sense, a PR, PR company agency, where? Yeah, in Macclesfield. Right, cool. And so how long did you stay there for? Six years. Oh right, okay. So yeah, you properly so sort I, of owned I your wings. Sort of, yeah. And whilst I was there, I did a communications, advertising, and marketing course because obviously I didn't have mm. those, well, the degree and all of that. So yeah. So what did you learn at the, during that period of time in terms of you? creative skills what were you actually doing on the day to day so to like once I'd got past the office junior bit yeah I was writing making tea yeah making tea putting stamps on envelopes yeah because we didn't have email <laughs> <laughs> we're talking the 90s here are we Nine, yeah 1999 right okay, yeah. yeah um but it was, was five. Oh, oh, shut shut up. Up. <laughs> sorry <laughs> five <laughs> No, I was thinking about age a lot recently because Holly, my girlfriend, just turned 30 and is, I'm hitting 30 next year. So oh, shut up. Really really no, but it's like, it's, going, no. it's going so quickly. <laughs> it gets quicker. Yeah, I know. I That's say. what I'm worried about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yesterday, I was 30. <laughs> and I woke up today, 41. Do you know what, though? <laughs> In my head, I'm still 23. Yeah. 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 That's the best way to be. Don't yeah. grow up. No. Yeah, yeah, 100%. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Um, Oh yeah, so it was it was writing, written. Oh right, writing yeah. copy. Yeah, um, because we were writing for newspaper, writing for clients, but putting the stories in the newspapers. Right, gotcha. Um, so whether it was the local hospital, liaising with them and getting good news stories out about the hospital, or writing their newsletter, or we worked with a lot of accountants and lawyers. Um, so writing about all different types of law and right, stories okay. just to so raise it was a real their mixed profile. Bag. Yeah, but um, mainly professional services. Right, okay. 
sort of big name corporates or like SMEs or what? Yeah, big name corporates. That right, okay. So we like deal with like the Manchester and Leeds office of gotcha of them of, of like a big multinational yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So you're there for six years. Yeah. And learn sort of your craft, I suppose, yeah. doing that. Yeah. I, I would imagine it would have been the sort of environment where, correct me if I'm wrong you had quite a lot of different skills to learn. You weren't probably doing just one niche little thing. Did you learn a lot about different sort of elements of marketing? Yeah, um, and learn about making sure you built those relationships with the journalists as well, because if you didn't have those, they weren't going to notice your story. Gotcha. And you'd got to put it in the post and they'd got to open the envelope and all of that. So, yeah, yeah. Um, a lot about how you compose writing, a lot about grammar, mm -hmm. that sort of thing, but also about how you draw people in. Gotcha. So what came next then? I worked for, so I got married and had a mini career break and then worked for a food broker, which... Doing um, their marketing? It was a small company, so it was a lot of customer services, but also marketing. So mm. looking at, say, we'd got um, some biscuits that we wanted to get into an airline. So we did. We worked for the manufacturer that, w and we would sell into retailers and um, larger organisations. So say, for example, biscuits into an airline, finding a creative way to get into that person's inbox or to get them to open that biscuit and eat it and try it and go, oh, actually, I think they'd be quite good on my airline. It's hard because they are bombarded with, well, particularly retailers, mm. buy my stuff. I'm, I've created this product. Can you buy it? Better get loads of freebies, though. I did eat a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we did a job for Kellogg's um, doing a promotion for them a few years ago, mm. and it was a new product that they wanted to send out to 2000 you know, potential client and centre businesses, basically. They, they had a profile of businesses that they wanted to send these products out to. And there were six bags of these, like, nut cluster things, and they were like snacks. Um, they were dead tasty. And we thought, you know, <laughs> instead of, like, sending these off for packers <laughs> to do, like, we'll save a few quid. And I got the entire team of, like, eight of us in a, in a room over a weekend. I think it was, like, Easter, like, Easter Van Calder weekend, like, three or four days packing these boxes. I'm amazed not everyone just handed the notice in. Like, it was the most <laughs> awful, impressive thing because I wanted to save a few quid. But it's funny we ate do. a lot of it. Yeah, I bet you did. And <laughs> still, I think I've still got bags of it in my desk. Like, there was just so much what, of it. What, like, stale cornflakes? No, it's not cornflakes. No, it's like a... Um, like a snack thing, oh, like sealed okay. bags right. and stuff. So it might still be alive. I don't know. I'll get you some. <laughs> okay. I'm, not, I'm not sure. <laughs> Quite nice. If when I was it? Four years ago. Definitely Four. stale. Yeah, you'd be all right. It was probably stale in the first place. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I can imagine there was... Uh, relationship building was everything, I suppose, yeah, and that's yeah, all wrong. Absolutely. And also assessing what's going on in the market, what's happening on the shelves, yeah, okay. where's a gap for that. Yeah, so real cutting your teeth stuff. Yeah. So where did the well did where did the whole working for yourself come from come from? When my son started school. Right. Um, so did you decide very consciously to make a change in that yeah, direction? Definitely. Um I just wanted that flexibility to be able to drop him off, pick him up, all of that. Yeah. Um so that was in twenty thirteen, somewhere somewhere Ten around. Ten years there. ago. Yeah. Um but I started as being self-employed, working for a very similar company to what I'd done before. Right. But doing arts and craft products. Right, I see. Um, which was like my dream job. It was yeah. like, oh, this has come full circle. I'm yeah, doing the thing you always wanted to do. Doing the thing I always yeah. wanted to do. Yeah. Um, but I quickly ended up not being able to work for anybody else. Because that's how it happens. Yeah, so I ended up back employed. Oh, did you? Yeah, which is great. I loved it. Yeah. Absolutely loved it. And then... Uh, 2019. Yeah. Went self employed again. Yeah. Just before a yeah, major global event. Yeah, amazing time <laughs> to get self employed. <laughs> well, you know what? If you can stay self employed through that, then you've well, probably. I'm still here. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, so yeah. thriving now. So, what sort of work do you do for what sort of businesses these days? So, I work with a variety of organizations. Ideally, I love working with e commerce, retail, manufacturing, because that's my background. Um, what sort of things do I do? I'll staff, I'll do a strategy. Strategy is always the starting point because I think we tend to think those businesses that are slightly bigger, that are um, 
you know, they've gone past the one man band stage. You think they've got it together because, you know, they're employing people, but actually they don't have a marketing team and mm. they don't have a marketing plan. Um, and it's actually, they, they actually need that bit to get them to the next stage and keep them growing. Um, so I'll put a plan together, pull apart everything that they've been doing and put it all back together again. Um, and I think it's so true that I think business owners, particularly of SMEs, yeah. you think you're doing everything and actually m you are doing everything, but you're probably doing yeah. everything pretty half assed because you can't do everything you properly. And one of the major lessons I learned in running a business is outsource as much as you can. I had an ethos, I still have an ethos, is only do the things that only you can do. Because there's certain things that only the business owner can do, but there's a lot of stuff that you can either outsource or delegate internally. Yeah. And um, it makes a massive difference if you have faith in somebody who's better at something than you are. The difference it makes your business is huge. Yeah, but you've got to have that trust. You do. And understanding gonna, as well. Yeah, and they've got to... So one of the things I like to do is um, really get to know and work with my clients so that they're not... So I am like their marketing arm or an yeah. extension of their team i'm not an external, external agency i'd rather be seen as be a, in the business. a collaborator yeah i think it's really interesting a lot of people who work in because we work in marketing yeah. you know we create content for businesses to marketing assets mm -hmm. and this is exactly how i explain our services to potential clients is that like i'm not just someone that you call up to do a job no. so i want a seat at the table yeah. here i want to understand your business i want to understand your goals i want to understand whether our values and all this align so that i know we'll make a good supplier for yeah. you and, and they take responsibility uh, yeah, you build a relationship yeah. with them exactly. as well, and it makes it so it not only makes it easier but it makes it more fun to do the work for them really does if, oh. if it's a pull and push all the time you don't align no. in whatever no. way yeah. it's never fun and it ever no. ends well no. and i want them to feel that they can pick up the phone yeah and i'm gonna answer them or call them back as soon as i can you know it's not you have to book an appointment to have a conversation no. with me kind so of you've, you've got you on on call sort of thing yeah yeah no i like that it's yeah. like you've got someone in the marketing role within an sme yeah even you know most SMEs don't have the budget or the yeah. structure to have well, a, a full-time marketing person yeah or if they do it's a junior yes when actually they probably need the probably got an apprentice the, in doing yeah, socials so, or something yes exactly and yeah. there's nothing wrong with that no absolutely nothing wrong with that but having someone with that experience that can get to know their business and understand with the experience of someone like you who's been absolutely. doing it for a while and understands yeah. how to get the best out of marketing strategies yeah Exactly right. Well, I sound like really big headed now. <laughs> that's, that's, that's why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> we're marketing you. <laughs> oh, carry on. <laughs> okay, so cool. So it's like been the last four or five years since you've been doing it on your own, and a mm. number of different clients yeah. um, all around the northwest. Is it this sort of area that yes. you work in? Yeah, pretty much. But you know, I could work anywhere, couldn't I? Yeah. But now we can all work. Yeah, what pretty much anywhere. You can. Yeah. It's quite difficult to take photos Photos, from the other yeah. side of the world, I have I to know, say. Yeah. But, um, yeah, but yes, certain a good massive tripod. Isn't <laughs> 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 it? Yeah, really, really big <laughs> tripod. Yeah. Yeah. It's tricky. It's so weird. coming on to the creativity side of things, and yeah. obviously you're a creative individual, otherwise you wouldn't have ended up in the career that you do. But So w when someone says creativity, what does that mean to you? Because I kind of think we feel it means something different to everybody. Yeah. Um, I suppose your immediate thought goes to making something or something arty or crafty mm. in my head mm -hmm. but then when you think about it more you think well actually you're creative with words you're creative with images you're creative with um numbers it's all around us isn't it exactly right yeah i was just processing it all oh, made you think <laughs> yeah no definitely i mean and i think it's interesting that you said making something Mm. Because making something is pretty broad. Yeah, that's true. It doesn't necessarily mean um, arts and crafts. No. Yeah, making something can be making an omelette. Yeah, see, creative cookery. Right. Mm. So why is it important? Why creativity? is creativity important? Yeah. I think you need that mix. Because we have structure, don't we? And we have, you know spreadsheets and all of that it's nice to have that escape mm. and bring that into what you're doing as well yeah 100 percent. and actually if we're not making anything we're not being creative then how's the world yeah it keeps things fresh i guess yeah it keeps it fresh true. to us if you just 
I, I don't know, you can, things can become a little flat and stale if they're just the same all the time. But if, you, like you, when you're cooking, you stick another ingredient into your dinner, it's going to make that more interesting. It's just little things. Depends what you put in. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> might make it worse. <laughs> but it's more interesting. Yeah, definitely more interesting. But, um, yeah, I think it just helps keep it fresh for us, I guess. I think in, so. On a personal level. I think so. It's, it's also it's kind of similar to the conversation we've been having recently with regards to sort of um, trying to find creativity because a lot of what we do, whilst there's creativity in some of the work that we do, a lot of it's great. Obviously, it's prescribed. It's following briefs, mm. and um, it's an important challenge for us, I think, to find new ways of being creative within that. If that makes sense, um, rather than just following the brief verbatim, it's like how can we make this interesting for ourselves? Yeah, yeah, um, and. You know, I remember there was one event we were we were travelling down to Peterborough to oh. do a very early morning shoot that was on a construction, um, and it was like we were on site at I think seven thirty or something, having driven down the night before and all this. And it was a glorious cold winter's morning with the sunrise, and we did the work that we needed to do on site and. Scott was just like, let's do some portraits. Yeah, yeah. just started taking our own photos. Because the sun was we coming We had a bit up. of time. Yeah, we had a bit race. of time. And so that's how you sort of keep it Ooh. fresh and interesting. And I mean, can you relate in that sense? I mean, the work that you do, you're following briefs for, for, for clients, yeah. right? Or creating the briefs, yeah. Or creating the briefs. Yeah. But how do you then bring creativity into that from to keep it fresh and interesting for yourself? It depends what I'm doing. Um, so if I'm doing a strategy, mm. you can look at, what else could they do? What could they do that's going to make them stand out? Mm. Um, and if I'm doing, say, for example, social media posts or email marketing, it's like, well, what images can I bring into this? Or what um, what can I make this post do? How can I make it stand out? Mm. Do you have to be creative and keep renewing ideas in order for it to be successful? Can, or can you just use the same formula again and again and again for different companies? Um, no, I think you keep it fresh. I don't think... I wouldn't necessarily say I'd got formulas. Mm. Um, so you because each company's different yeah. and does different things. I suppose if you were working with a company, say, for example, it's an accountant, and then you started working with another accountant, mm. then, yeah, it would become... You'd be doing the similar sort of thing, wouldn't you? Yeah. But I don't have any clients like that at all different which is quite nice so, different. so in terms of your clients then can you give us an example of what sort of clients your clients do okay so i have a client who's um got an online store um selling direct to consumers um and then i have a client who is um a coach a business coach okay so Variety. Yeah, so service Great. based or not necessarily yeah. just service based, but yeah. also like yeah. stock and product yeah. and retail yeah. and all the rest of it. Yeah. That is broad. And I suppose you have to bring different sort of strategies for marketing to each of those. Yeah, because they've got different audiences. Yeah. They've got okay. different goals. Mm -hmm. it, it all goes back to w what is it they want to achieve? Mm. What, it, what are their business goals? Mm. And how, what marketing can they do that's going to help them achieve those? Cause yeah, that makes sense. You know, they might be posting everywhere. So did you work with people in creative industries? Um, yeah. Yeah. Like, as in clients? Yeah. No, not currently. So you bring the creativity mm -hmm. to the party? Yeah. Gotcha. So they've got a product and they need to have that creative mind on how to actually market yeah. it. Do you feel like a creative pressure on that sense? If you're no, bringing all the creative... I enjoy it. Right. They, um, they're sort of a bit... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? They need that guidance and that someone to say, here's what you could do. Right, okay. Um, so open the eyes to yeah, possibility sort yeah. of thing. And that creates, it takes a creative mind. There's no yeah. question. Yeah. There's no question. So you think so the creative, cre that creativity is defined by making something and traditionally to you that means some arts and crafts and similar. Because of... Because of your background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, this is why it's really interesting because we speak with so many different people. They've got such different definitions of what creativity mm -hmm. can be. But I think it's it's an interesting thing to think because you said you're always into arts and craft, like right from the early days. Do yeah. you think creativity is something that we learn or is it something that we are born with, in your opinion? Uh, see, I'm a bit split on this. 
Go on. Because, so, I had a very creative set of grandparents. Um, on both sides? Yes. But one side was they could follow a pattern and they could follow um, instructions. Yeah. The other were they would just create something, give them a paintbrush or give them... Um, without structure. Without structure. Um, and I'm more on that side. I will just, like, give me a crochet hook and I'll design you something. Right, or, okay. You know. You know that Billy Connolly once said, never trust a man who left alone in a room with a tea cosy doesn't try it on. <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of feel like... <laughs> I kind of feel like that's that sort yeah. of person. <laughs> Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like the sort of person like left alone with anything will make something yeah, out yeah, of it, yeah. have a bit of a laugh. Yeah, or why not? <laughs> Is that not I what it's for? <laughs> <laughs> it's so, a great yeah. way to live life. But then I think <laughs> people do learn it. Yeah. As well. I think Yeah. Do you think so? I think, think, can be learned I think, I think there is a natural flair. I think some people have a natural flair. And I think some people learn it easily. And I think other people think they're just not creative at all when actually they probably are. And I, I have that. a bit of an issue with that. I think that because I remember like when I was a kid, I used to look at people that could draw in like art class or yeah. whatever. And I'd be like, I can't draw. I'm so, not creative. I wish I could do that. So I feel like I always had that sort you of... You wanted to. I wanted to be creative, but I didn't know how or what it was. And then I don't, it wasn't really until I went to uni that I started to pick up little bits and just learn it for myself. So in that Find sense, the I right fact, vehicle yeah, for your yeah. creativity. Yeah, because yeah, it is different to everyone. And I think that's the thing, isn't it? But I, I mean, always used to look at creative people and go, I wish I was creative. Yeah. But because what, I didn't what have did that you What did you think those creative... Why did you think those people were creative? I don't, I don't know why. What were they doing? I just used to like see cool paintings and think, that's cool. I want to do that. I guess it's tapping into what you were saying. So like a traditional definition of creativity yeah. might be something like, uh, you know, painting, crafting, music, yeah. those sort of traditional arts-based things. Yeah. And I think it's important that we shine the light on the fact that creativity doesn't necessarily need to fall into one of those more traditional kind mm. of um, artistic kind of endeavors i suppose really because creative is in everything we do i'm really keen at some point to maybe speak with someone on the podcast who is in like an engineering role or yeah. an accounting yeah, role yeah. or i don't know stock like management an architect yeah do you know what i mean an architect's a great yeah. show yeah. yeah or or a chef yeah or you know these roles that you might not ordinarily say are creative roles and understand why like i've worked with so many accountants over the years and some of them are so straight you know, and of course, you know, there are laws to follow. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, but what I mean is like a, a good accountant, I think, really gets to understand the person they're speaking to and understand their business mm. and what they're trying to get. Oh, that's... Oh, dear. Right. So, <laughs> have we told you about this? Yes. It's cannon break. So we'll, uh, we'll reset cameras and we'll come... I'll hold that thought, shall I? <laughs> No. Well, now you know. She was just saying that she was always wondering what the cannon break was for. And now now she's you seen know. It. Now I know. You've seen it in action. I've seen it in action because I've only listened to the podcast. I've not watched it on. Yeah, that's right. What's a cannon? Yeah, what's a cannon? <laughs> <laughs> we now do. So, can you give us a quick geek warning? I can, yes. So, so just no. very briefly, as a side, a side, a side, we have now got an, an, another Lumix S5 Mark II. Yep. So, we now have. Three of those between <laughs> us, and you've got an S5 one. I've got an original S5 and an S5 two, and so we've got two R6s. And so we could quite easily now get rid of the Canon and stick a Lumix S5 two in. But why, we quite why like would we? the Canon <laughs> break. <laughs> it's now part of our thing. <laughs> Unless people start complaining about it, we're going to stick stick to the Canon break. I think. So yeah, as I was saying. Coming back to that thing about creativity and roles that aren't traditionally creative, I think it's really important we do shine a light on that. So I'll definitely look to... We'll definitely do some research and yeah. try and get some guests in and that kind of thing. Um, Can we get Kevin McLeod on? What should is we he, see? Is he an architect? Oh, yeah. 
he's a presenter on the on but channel. I, no, I feel like he's had. Get on. You need Gordon Ramsay. Oh, that would be a good one. Got any links? Get Gordon he on. He was talking to Zoe Ball this morning. That's about it. Or maybe text Radio 2. <laughs> <laughs> see if they can pass on his phone number. <laughs> so, do you, so coming back to that then, do you, so do you think, you say that you can learn some creative skills. Do you think the best creatives, and best is a very ambiguous and subjective thing, but like the you know, sort of top creative minds, do you think you have to have a level of baseline kind of creativity or flair? Um, I guess so. I think, I think you probably do, mm. um, unless you've got a particular interest, and then you could learn it. Mm. Um, but like Scott was saying, he needed to find the right, the, the right outlet for him. Yeah. So it what do you think on this? Not found it yet. As in it being a learnt behaviour. Yeah. Or or a born with nature or nurture. I think there's a couple of different ways of looking at it. I think. Like Jill said, there's people that are just naturally talented and creative right from the outset. Other people will learn it. But I also think it's a bit like a muscle in the sense that if you train it, the more creative you will become. So it's pointless saying to yourself, I want to be creative, but not doing anything about it. If you take little steps towards doing that and achieving that goal, you'll you start to find yourself being more creative. If you set, like when I does that start, mean you have to have a desire to be creative? I think, I think, yeah, I think because it won't happen automatically. I think, I think that's where the biggest thing is. I think, yeah, desire yeah. to want to do it. Yeah, the want. Does that thing. mean that there needs to be an end goal? I, I don't know. Or is I, it, it, I don't think there is an end goal. So no, I don't think there is an end goal. Is, is creativity the process or the product? The process. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a big question. I just thought of it right then. It's I, a think good, it's, it? I think it's both. There's a so creative I enjoy, process. I enjoy the whole process of... Because you always not, talk not about how much you love editing photos. Yeah. I hate editing no, photos. No, I love it. That's I the bit where you can change photos. it into whatever you want. I know, but I'm frustrated. I want to be that, out of my camera. Is that... So here's a thought. If you can change it when you've spent time taking a professional photo... But you still got to shoot it right at the same time. Okay. Yeah, you can't do anything. There is yeah. skill in You can't in polish the turds. Yeah. I mean, you can a bit. So you still, you still got to learn the process of taking that photo. Okay. And how to get the best in camera. But then I'm not into like Photoshopping everything out and changing the whole photo. I just like tweaking colors and adding Texture gradients and, f- and textures. Feel. And yeah. Film yeah, you, t- you tend to do sort of color and, yeah. color and contrast and yeah. stuff quite rather than like moving other things into the yeah. image and compositing photos and all yeah. that kind of stuff. And it's the same when you're doing video because you're always trying mm. to, in whatever you've recorded, you're always trying to find the story. Mm. And then once you've got that, then you can get creative with colours and give it a look and yeah, like that. a feel and yeah. a, all that kind of stuff. And I, I think from my perspective, is made probably because Ian was the person that taught me photography. He was like, you're not allowed to use Lightroom yeah. for the first like six... I've come from like the YouTube generation. Right. Yeah. Like Peter McKinnon. You're basically mm-hmm. saying you were five in 1999 again this is what I'm saying <laughs> we're coming back to the fact, yeah, we, we get the point Scott uh, no but th- th- there's kind mm. of like an old school kind of thing where you learn how to take the shot on camera because if yeah. you're an analog photographer you don't it's not a lot you can do in post you can yeah. dodge and burn a bit and you can do a few bits in terms of contrast but fundamentally the what you've got on that piece of film is, is, is all you've got really mm. um, and I've it's not just here but I've been on courses with other photographers of my sort of generation who are like we get it right in camera mm. they yeah, get, I think the, that they the get the white balance right a lot of it and I'm not, I, I even I'm not that bad I'll fix white balance in post yeah. and that kind of stuff but a lot of people will just get it absolutely perfect so because they hate editing yeah but you still need to do that even if you're going to edit if you if for example you want a dark image and you're going to edit it to be dark you still need to shoot it that way you can't take it in bright daylight and sunshine and just with not the correct lighting, you it's need to all know. part of the same yeah, process. Yeah. you yeah. need to know what you're doing still. But the product itself is it creative, or is it the process that's creative? In is that the case, end product? It's, it's is that both. photograph at the end? Is that a creative thing? Yeah, because or is of, the making because, of it a creative thing? Because of thing? the process it's gone through, right. it is a creative. thing. So that piece of art so hung on the wall in a gallery. Yeah, you can't really deny it. It's a creative item or a creative thing. 
Well, then when you think about, like, when I was at college, for example, like, Damien Hurst had his, I think it was a cow's head in a, rotting in a box, and you think... It sounds good. How (laughs) is that art? (laughs) How is that creative? Right. Well, this is a little uh, a tangent, and isn't what it? Sort oh, the, 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 yeah. What sort of as, <laughs> process? I what sort of creative <laughs> process is that? <laughs> I saw something in a museum. I don't know if I've seen it or seen it on something, and it was a urinal, and it had just been flipped upside down. Yeah. So what's it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, I did that. <laughs> but that was in an art gallery, right? So this is the right. as a kid, like so my I'm mom not and sure dad. If it was Damien Hirst now. I think we'll find out. Well, yeah, we'll find, Google it. Yeah, we'll Google it. But um, a lot of it could just be the thought, the thought of turning that thing upside down. Is that the creative product? I the mean, the actual yeah. urinal isn't that creative. Yeah, it's an upside down <laughs> urinal. Right. I used to go get sort of dragged around loads of art galleries as a kid, and because I was so terrible at art at school, well, I was told I was terrible, yeah. and I thought I was terrible, and I was terrible objectively. I thought I was terrible. I still do. That wasn't my outlet for creativity, but I didn't understand that. I didn't understand what I was trying to achieve. So I used to get dragged around these art galleries as kids and stuff and see stuff like, that's not art. Anyone could do that. Yeah. That can't, not your rules yeah. necessarily, but like, all, I remember going to one gallery and there was like a framed piece of like white paper. Yeah. Nothing yeah. on it. I'm well, going. I could do that. Yeah. How is that selling <laughs> for 600 quid? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or whatever. And there was a red one next to it. It's like, wow, it's well, red. Well then, I suppose. It depends on who's going to buy that. They might think it's amazing. What does it signify to them? Yeah, what does it mean to them? Ah, oh, see, this is properly like philosophical, creative <laughs> chat. <laughs> <laughs> because, like, I, I, it's, you, you can definitely form an argument to say that that thing is not creative. So, is creativity in the eye of the beholder? So, is it the process or is it the person who it's for? The person who it's uh. for is part of this process. It's either the client or it's the artist who's not willing to give it away. It's for themselves. Mm. Is that the part of creativity that matters? I, don't, I think it's like, do you remember a few weeks ago we said a photo might, it might be the favourite photo you've ever taken, but I might show it to you and you might hate yeah. it. Subjectivity. Yeah. About art, you know. Yeah. That's the thing. Know. Art yeah. is in the... It's a weird, weird it. thing. Yeah. I, I still stand by the fact that I think the process is the most creative element of it, the making of it, because without that, you've got nothing. And I, at the same time, I think a lot of people need something tangible at the end of it to say, there's a thing at the end. I'm like that. I don't really like the process unless there's a finish. Mm. Personally, I know there's lots of creatives who never finish anything. I was going to say, I, yeah, are you one of them? I've when, when is something? an awful lot of stuff and not finished it. When is something finished? Oh, st- <laughs> <laughs> it's never finished never. it's never finished well this is the thing where I think it's quite useful when you're working for somebody else doing a creative thing because there's always a dead a deadline or, or a budget so when either of those things run out is when it's finished is it perfect that's a different question but finished there is often unless it's for yourself or it's for you know there needs to be so I, I think you need some constraints to get the best creativity out of you. Yeah. You need some guidelines, some borders, some structure of yeah. some sort, a brief. Do you feel the same with marketing? If you're given like a complete blank slate, say, do some marketing for this product, please, Jill. Would that be more difficult or less difficult than being told, I've got a brief for you and you've got a budget and we've got a deadline of the end of next week. What do you prefer? I prefer the ones that don't have it. So a completely uh, there's, blank slate. There's pros and cons to both because if you've if they've got a completely blank slate, you can help them get to that creative point and get them going with it. Mm. Whereas if they've got some stuff already and give you a brief, you can go, okay, does this fit with what they're trying to achieve? Okay, it does. Okay, let's let's create something. But that's a would you rather then? Would I rather? Um, so if you were if you were introduced to a company and they had no marketing person in the company, but they had a product, they had no idea how to market it. That's your ideal. 
as opposed to being told, we've already kind of got a bit of social here, we advertise in this, we do a bit of above the line here. Yeah, so if they've got all, the, all of that, I come along and go, right, let's pull all that apart. Yeah. Let's start again. <laughs> let's do it this let's way. Let's see. <laughs> and I think that's natural of anybody going into any marketing role. Start from scratch or pull if it apart and if they're, analyze Well, what if they're got. going into something, they need to understand it. Right. And part of understanding it is finding out what they've been doing and all the background and analyzing what's worked, what's not worked. Yeah. Um, so then na- I think naturally, to begin with, they will start, f- not start from scratch, but go, right, okay, these are the things we're going to do. Got you. Got you. So it's a combination. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So where does your inspiration come from then when you've got a blank slate? You know, is it is it purely from the product or the service that you're marketing? Or is there something more to it in terms of you're able to conjure up the creative thoughts lot, out of nowhere or what? A lot of it comes from the product or the service and what, what it's used for, but also what's in the wider environment and what what's going to appeal to their audience. Right. Um, you know, what's going to make someone buy that product? What's going to you know, switch that light in the head and, and go, oh, actually, I want that. It can be quite... I don't know. It's just... I've lost my train of thought. It's more... I, I guess it's more to do with, like, the individual yeah. product or service. Yeah. That's got to be surely the bit that's unique each time. Yeah. And so you, you say that you like getting behind the lines of the company and really understanding yeah. them before you sort of create. Yeah. And you... I think that's natural. We, how can you market something if you don't understand it? Yeah, right. As I say, it's a similar kind of strategy we have with our clients. Mm. It's like we don't just want to do the job. Mm. We much prefer, our favourite clients are the ones that sort of welcome them into our, uh, their team because yeah. we're part of their yeah, team. We're absolutely. trying to achieve the same goals. Mm. And that's how I think you get the most out of any creative. Yeah. Because it gets the wheels turning. Yeah. Down. Yeah, I would completely agree. Yeah. So... In business then, creativity. This is an interesting one, I think. Just creativity in business generally. There's lots of businesses, as we've discussed, that aren't necessarily creative, but there's creativity within them. Do you think it's important, do we think it's important to have a st- have strategic priority of creativity within a business, no matter what it is? Oh. Silence falls across the table. Yeah, I yeah. think you do. It's particularly if you're marketing it. Um, if you look at companies like Mon- Monzo Bank, Monzo yep. Bank, look at what they do. They've got like, mega marketing. Yeah, but it's creative. It's just a credit card. Or but little things card. like making it red, bright red. It's coral, actually. <laughs> <laughs> see, you both know what I'm talking about. Yeah, because yeah. they've got great marketing. Yeah, because yeah. every you see that coral coloured card, mm. and it you go What's hot that? pink. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, that is, it's true. It's like. Is it that red is the most significant colour when it comes to marketing or something? If you just put a little bit of red on something, it makes people Pay drawn to it. Yeah, yeah. If you, it if you look at most brands, the bigger brands, a little bit of red. red in it. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's true. And um, in yeah. Dorset, down in Dorset, oh, there's a museum. It's the John Haynes Museum, and it's full of old cars. And he's got a red room, and all the cars are red. That's quite intense. It is intense, but it's fascinating. Too much like red. <laughs> it's a fascinating walk because it's also got information about brands and why they use red. Where's it's this? Yeah. Dorset. Okay. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so no, red. Have and a I always thought. I uh, sorry, I always stayed clear of red when it came to marketing because it's a bit angry. When you go to the shop next, and you walk up and down like the drinks aisle. You'll notice it on all the labels. If if it's not completely red, there'll be a little bit of red on it somewhere. Mm. Mm. A bit intimidating. <laughs> all that red. You're gonna yeah. walk down the aisle, walk down the shop, you know, and now and go. Oh. Yeah, just be frightened. <laughs> as what? Well. But yeah, I think you know, creativity in business. I can't. My feelings are that you wouldn't be able to push a business forward if you weren't being creative. And that doesn't mean every business needs to be creative because some don't need to push themselves forward. I think any business that wants to change what they do or grow, surely you've got to be creative. Not just in your marketing. 
Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think so. In terms of your strategy, in terms of yeah, because you've got to be different to someone else that's in the same industry as you. Yeah, what's going to make you stand out? Because yeah. I, I feel like running a business, Jill, you may agree uh, or you may not agree. Um, running a business, I feel, is one of the most creative things I've ever done. I feel like Ooh. that, like, you know, and it's like so come from someone who is a musician photographer. I feel like running a business is just as creative because. For me, creativity comes in the form of decision making, autonomy, having to make the right decisions and having to then research them and look at the, what if I do this or what if I do that? And what if I don't do this? And what if I don't do that? And I've got five different options. If you're interviewing someone for a job and you're interviewing 30 people, that's creative. You get creative about what you're trying to find out about people and how you think that they make fit into your company as a piece of the jigsaw. Yeah, That's creative to me. Yeah. Um, and they're not necessarily creative, traditional creative values. It's not painting something with a paintbrush. Yeah, I'd, I'd not thought of running my business as being creative, but I guess really, so. yeah. Maybe if, maybe you'd enjoy those elements. Yeah, probably if they were more creative. Yeah. <laughs> maybe you sort of pretended that they were <laughs> creative <laughs> pursuits. This is a creative thing that I'm doing when I'm doing my accounts. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when I, when you say things like, oh, he's a creative accountant, it just sounds like he's dodging. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but there is creativity, yeah. surely, in accountancy, uh, in terms of how you, there's more than one way to skin a cat. And from an accountant's perspective, they want to, uh, they should be able to understand the business, understand how the what the best strategy is for the business when it comes to their accountancy. Oh, you should set up as an LLP, or you should set up an L- limited company. Those things, to me, are they creative? I think they are. Or are they just knowing what the rules are? Yeah, they know what the rules are, but they also know what's best for that person or that enterprise or that business. And that's where people come in, into it rather than just numbers. And that's how they, a bad accountant will just look at the accounts and go, well, this is what this business needs. Mm-hmm. Whereas a good accountant will sit down and have a, a one-to-one and try and learn about that individual. That I'd not thought of it like that. I, could, I quite like that, actually. I can see that being very true. I, certainly from my experience, I think that's why I enjoy running businesses so much. Mm. It's because they're not black and white. There's a hundred different choices you can make in terms of your business every single day. Yeah. So balancing all those plates and deciding what's best and dealing with the right people and finding the right suppliers and finding the right customers and how to market. So that yeah, for that me, is true, like, yeah. that's like a creative yeah. dance to me. No, that's true. Because you think about an account and you just think numbers and you think numbers, there's like rules and laws and there's only one way that numbers work. Mm. But then when you do bring people into it, that's when it you get other ideas and it becomes more creative, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Like you said, yeah. Exactly. And creativity, I think, comes from groups of people as well. Because you find the right tribe, the rough, r- you work with the right people, they inspire you to be more creative. Thing. That's huge. Whereas yeah. other people can really stifle your creativity. Yeah. Um, so surrounding yourself, not just in terms of the people that you work with, but your clients. Mm. I keep going on about this, don't I? But it's so true. Find the clients you value what you do. Oh, yeah. And it's not like working anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're just doing all the things you want to do. Yep. yep. And they and agree. And, and they want to do it. And yeah. having fun. Yeah. yeah. They're the best clients, right? Yeah, totally. So that's business, I suppose. Should it just be used as an escape outside of work or should it be a business? I think it should be a business. I think it should be a business. Um, it definitely has a place, I think. Um, but maybe it's not something that business owners would necessarily value or put budget behind. I, th- it I, I think it can be undervalued quite a lot. Yeah. That I was, that's exactly what I was getting at. I think yeah. it's undervalued. It, it wouldn't necessarily be identified as creativity in business. Mm. How would you put a budget on it? What do you put a budget on? Yeah, it's difficult. Mm. Creativity things. A lot, yeah. of, I th- throwing. a lot of people, I think a lot of businesses might see it as being quite easy, mm. but then when they actually get their teeth into it, they realize how difficult it is. It's like making a video. Mm. They don't realize what goes into it. You've got all the planning, the shooting, the filming, the editing. It takes a long time to make a video, but they, they see it on social media that someone's put a video up and they're so, like a house an estate agent has seen a video and they want a video like that. And they want it tomorrow. And, and they, they want go, it tomorrow, yeah. It'll only take you 10 minutes. Yeah, exactly yeah. that. And it's one uh, of the things we're constantly trying to explain to the Yeah, I know. Yeah, it <laughs> does, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> you know, we go and shoot a house <laughs> and it'll take three hours to yeah. shoot a house. Yeah. It's like, so can we have the video tomorrow then? Mm. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <no. laughs> you know, you're looking at 
double the time at least to yeah. edit as you did to shoot. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's not always that straightforward, but that's part of the creative process. Yeah. I think trying to educate people of what is involved. It's why we've started doing a lot of behind the scenes stuff, or we're going to do more behind yeah, the scenes yeah. stuff in terms of what the process is involved in yeah. our creativity. Yeah. Because hopefully people then understand what there's a lot more it. to it. Yeah. There's a huge amount of work. You're not just pressing a button on a camera. That's the old trope, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, how hard can it be? Just push a button. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Um, it's the same. Uh, maybe, maybe less so with video. I think there's probably. I don't know. I was I was on this job with photographers. Uh, sorry, videographers um, last week, and they were saying how it boils their. <laughs> it gets their goat that <laughs> photographers seem to be the artsy you know creative ones yeah whereas the videographer guys just turn up and pick yeah. up the pieces and there's uh, probably yeah. a lot more work well there is a lot more work in post a lot of time yeah. on videography you know the, the photographer will have like six hours of the shoot yeah you're know, getting things just perfect getting one photograph and then there's an hour at the end of the day for the videographer to do it and all the lights are set up for stills <laughs> and not for constant light and all yeah. that kind of stuff it's like it's a constant thing yeah and they get paid just as much as we do we need four guys to do what one guy does on photography yeah. and all that kind of stuff you know yeah. um but i think i think people generally have a bit more understanding that there's a lot more that goes into making a video than goes into a photo and i think it's not helped by things like iphones iphones and like you know like this what's this thing on the samsung's or whatever it is the the pixel phones oh yeah you swipe around it and it deletes something yeah it? what's it called it's like photoshop yeah it's like a photo magic AI eraser thing. magic or eraser yeah like, where you can, can just like highlight a thing in your photo <laughs> and it'll get rid of it and so what's going anyone can do that now don't get me started on it yeah and it's it, <laughs> You know, we've just we've discussed ad, ad nauseum over the episodes about yeah. AI, and it's quite yeah. an interesting, challenging yeah. thing. Uh, how that we really need to sort of embrace AI rather than the fight it because it's coming. Well, no, Did you see the news it? yesterday? Yeah, I was going to say, what's this? So, in the news what? yesterday, there was um, well, Jill, go on, you. Um, there's the people like Elon Musk are calling for the development of AI to be slowed down because it's going too fast. Elon Musk is genuinely scared of it. Yeah, he yeah. said he, he spoke yeah, about his phobia of it. Yeah, yeah. but there's, uh, a, and, and there's a lot. lot of there's yeah, yeah. there's some, lots petition. of very, very big conglomerates of sign this thing going. Let's take a breather for six months. Yeah. No development of AI because that. this is terrifying. <laughs> yeah. This could be the end of the human race. Yeah. Well, sort the start of, of yeah. 2023, we hadn't even heard of Chat GPT. Now it's yeah. writing everyone's copy. It's bonkers. Yeah. It's scary how right. he writes everybody's copy. It is scary. Well, and the the fact of the matter is, people wouldn't use it for writing their copy if it wasn't good. But then, do you, not, do you not think everybody good? will be churning out the same stuff? Because it's yes. not taking, it's, it's, sort not, of. it's not needing that The problem is the AI now is getting so good mm. that but you can you can uh, get it to learn better. But yeah. is it actually learning or is it just regurgitating everything that's already on the internet? Yeah, of course it is regurgitating. But there's so much data out there that it's about how it's presented. So if you learn how to get the best out of ChatGPT, for example, you'd be so much better than some idiot who just types in the question. There's guides on how to use ChatGPT Chat now so that you can get the most out of it in the format that you want it, in the way that you want it, presented in the way that you need it. I don't like it. And that... I don't like it. It's a weird I'm thing, though, isn't fan. it? It is a weird thing. Can't I'm ignore it. Can't on, ignore on the it. You're other right. side, though, this is like talking about AI in a positive way. If it is just regurgitating everything that's on the internet, is it not just doing the same as we all do anyway? Yeah, exactly. We're just, we're just regurgitating the same stuff in a different way. Yeah. Mm. Mm, I don't know. When it comes to writing <laughs> stuff, if an individual writes it, then and they write it for a particular audience. I've got a mate who's different. a copywriter and he's sort of like, yeah, my job's just like, how can I do, how can I legitimize my fees? Well, it's the same with photography. Now you'll be able to type in exactly what you want in a photo. Like I saw a video the other day and he's typed in, uh, make a photo of a couple sitting in a cafe in the seventies. Mm -hmm. And it looked exactly like that. You could not have taken that photo mm -hmm. apart from the fact they had two noses. What? The, the photo gave him two noses. That's not good. That, that, <laughs> but not apart right. from that, it looked incredible. As a minor that, issue, what was that though. Yeah, yeah. That's some AI generator. Oh, okay. But you, you can type in exactly what you want from a photo and it will give See, you. See, I've that. always thought, maybe naively thought that something like photography or videography is fairly safe to a point because we still need to go shove a camera in people's faces. 
You can't fake that in AI. You can but do when we're all in living AI. in the metaverse. Oh, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to happen. I still don't even know what the metaverse is, Scott. <laughs> we're going to be just walking around me. with goggles on. <laughs> oh, don't. I just yeah, need to squeeze another 20 years or so. You're not going to see anyone. Anyway. You're not going to see anyone's <laughs> face in a few years. It'll all be mm. digital. Even yeah. tools like oh. Canva have just literally... Canva's gone really good. They've literally launched a whole new suite of tools last week. Yeah, I know. And, uh, AI tools. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and you like... And it can do a lot of things. It can change um, images that you... Or graphics that you're making. It can make them move. And all sorts. Mm. So it's in my head, that's better than Illustrator and Photoshop. Well, f certainly Adobe stuff in from terms of AI is getting better. And but from a user-friendly point of view. Yeah. Well, this is the thing. It's mm. not professional software. No. So it's got an easy access point to lots of people. Who, yeah. And actually, Canva does a lot of great stuff for small businesses yeah, who don't have big budgets. Yeah. Mm. budgets. Absolutely. Yeah. And and on the flip side, something like um, you know Photoshop, for example, and, and Adobe professional product yeah <coughs> that's getting far better at ai but it's still a very complicated piece of software with a very high entry point yeah you have to know what you're yeah. doing on photoshop to be able to operate it even though it's got loads of funky ai bits in it it's interesting to see how it will go definitely i think i think the, the danger is with ai is it it gets you nine tenths of the way there and I think it's the human element that would make it exceptional. It'll be good, but not necessarily exceptional. Um, but I think if you use... Like I, I've, I've done some copy recently where I got ChatGPT to write the copy for me as a starting point to which I then went and made better and more relevant and yada, yada, yada. And for me, that was really helpful because I'm terrible at starting things. When I've got a blank... You know, you love the blank page. I'm terrified of the blank page. I think you've got to be in the right frame of mind to deal with that Never blank page, it. though. Like, some days I will struggle and I'll think, oh, no, it's not a job for today because I'm not in that right frame of mind mm -hmm. for doing it. Well, is that a creative characteristic, you think? It's a, it's a, a characteristic crea of it's a creative individual, I should say. It is for me. Yeah. Um, and I know if I'm writing copy, I, I have to do that in the morning because I'm more productive and more awake and alert and the ideas just come yeah whereas in the afternoon I like a little doze oh, who doesn't I could do the doze <laughs> I like oh. speaking of a little doze should we do, it a time? Little, little, do a little cannon break So a lot of our podcasts do tend to talk about a bit about AI. We're obviously very, it's yeah. very, very uh, topic. It's topical. It's topical at the minute. Very topical, isn't it? Isn't it? Mm. Um, I'm very keen to get a copywriter, I think. Speak to a copywriter. Because I think of all of the AI assistants in there, I think copy is the one that seems to have jumped forward a lot with ChatGPT and others. Mm. There's a Google one as well, I think, isn't there? They're all there coming out. There is a Google one, yeah. All and even out. Canva's got one. Oh, really? Mm. Um, a friend of mine is a copywriter down south, um, and he's 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 uh, you know aired his um, concern. I think, like you say, for you, if you need to generate that idea to get you started, it's just a starting point. Yeah. And then I'll go off from it. It works for me. Well, if you've got a specific target audience and you've got um, a specific message you want to get across, then working with a copywriter. Mm is going to get you better results because they'll make sure that the language they use and the um, this way they phrase yeah, things... Yeah, and this is exactly what I mean about, like, I don't think it'll ever be as good yeah. as a real but copywriter. Do you a few weeks but ago? there's a cost implication here. Oh, yeah, And that's the is. thing. The Nick Drake thing. Yeah, Nick... No, Nick Cave. Nick Cave, yeah. Yeah. Who's Nick Drake? I don't know who Nick Drake Another musician. Is. Another musician. Uh, yeah, the Nick Cave thing. And it, it, it wrote a song and it could have easily been Nick Cave. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. I've, well, yeah, I've seen that. Nick Cave wasn't amused. He was not amused. No, but... Um, he, he was disparaging about the quality of the writing, whereas, as you said, you said that could have been Nick Cave. Yeah. So, again, it's when you're dealing with subjective art masses, it is quite... That's quite difficult to say, well, that's better or worse or good enough because it's each to their own, mm -hmm. which is a bit of a challenge, I think, in that respect. I, I, I I'm... 
on the same mind wavelength as um, Elon Musk. Bit afraid of it. Yeah, it needs slowing down. But how do we slow down human development? My uh, my question is, why do they want it to slow down? What are they? What do they know that Ooh, we don't? Nice cynical angle. I like it. Because <laughs> <laughs> they must know something. Because well, the yeah, computers will knows. take over. Elon will know. Yeah. He'll be, he can see the future. Well, he's we, at the, he's at we the forefront can we, of it. Can all, we get yeah. in touch with him <laughs> <laughs> on Twitter? I don't think he's interested in, uh, in coming in on our podcast. podcast. You never know. You never know. You can only say no. So we get Gordon Ramsay, Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Who should to <laughs> 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 you never know where it's going. You never know where it's going. So um, one other point I think we should just go around a little bit before we wrap up. And that is in terms of creative people and the nature of the creative people generally. Are creative people, so again, we touched on this a little bit in a previous podcast, but are creative people, why do they doubt their talent? Or do they doubt their talent more than somebody like an accountant would? Is it less tangible? I, I From my point of view I think a lot of creatives are very introverted um, so they kind of they're the ones that will spend a long time on their own working at that thing you have the time to overthink it and you're staring at it for that long maybe you do start to overthink it too much that you start to doubt it because you've been staring at it for so long mm. but I, I think the introversion is quite a big th- reason as to why. Mm. Do you think there's like traditional characteristics of a creative, personal traits? I don't think there is. Ah. Well. I'm with Jill. Really? Because there's lots of extrovert creatives yeah, out there. Yeah, there are. No, I'm not saying there aren't any. There's lo- I feel yeah. it's just as many but as then, there are But then yeah. maybe you know the extrovert ones because you see them. I know a lot of both, I think. Oh, okay. Well, so I'm, so I'm obviously just pulling on my own mm. personal experience, which is mainly in music. But when I was doing music, when I went to uni to do music, a lot of people there were very introverted. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Mm. And I know that when I was like performing like a solo gig or whatever, I'd kind of use the mic as like... A shield. A shield. Mm. Yeah, I, I couldn't see past the mic if that makes sense but i think so i ev- couldn't do it without a microphone that sounds weird because a microphone is amplifying you yeah but i couldn't have done it without oh, a I microphone that. i get that that's just a suit of armor thing. yeah like a lot of musicians struggle to or a guitar yeah i really struggle when i sort of made the the change from drums to singing so all of a sudden it's like what are we doing yeah. <laughs> yeah all of a sudden you're just yeah. not mm. doing anything else but for every you know, every sullen bass player stood in the shadows. There's a Freddie Mercury at the front. Yeah, mm. you know what I mean. I yeah. think th- there's there's each there's loads of both. I mm. think. I think that's definitely in music. I'm, I'm just talking from at, a musical perspective. If you're looking at um, artists, for example, if they're doubting their talent, is it because people don't buy it? Is it because they're told that? Well, what are you going to do with that? It's very difficult. If you create something yeah. and somebody says, I don't like that. Yeah. Except they don't say that, do they? They say, that's shit. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. So people yeah. do that. And it's very difficult to say, no, it's not. Yeah. So like, if, if you were saying, like, someone had done a p- profit and loss sh- sheet for me, yeah. I couldn't go, that's shit. No. Because, because it is it's, what it's, it is. It's, it's tangible. Yeah. It is factual. Yeah. And I think the thing with creative output, you can say, that's shit. Well, you shouldn't. You should say, I don't, I don't like that. that. I don't anyone should say that to no, anyone. No, but everyone, same what I mean is you can, you can, you should be able to say, I don't like that. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. that's perfectly acceptable. It's yeah. not acceptable to say that shit. Yeah. But because it, that, it's subjective. That's not like just a creative thing. It's like, it could be anything. That was, if you're watching a football match and you see someone lose the ball and you go, that's shit. And then you, you're on at that player forever for the rest of the game. Mm. That is going to eat into them. And then they're going to doubt themselves. It's the same sort of thing. I'd be really interested to do some more research generally into um, depression, anxiety, suicide rates and things like that of people in creative industries and whether they're any different to non-creative industries. I know it's a bit dark. I was going to say, you've Very a bit dark. dark. It has got a bit dark, but it'd be interesting because it might illustrate the point a little bit one way or the other. My dad might know a little bit about that. So 
Yes, that is a very good point. We have said we'll get him on. We're going to get Mr. Edwards Sr. on the show yep. at some point. So, uh, yeah, that's one for him, I guess. Yeah. I'd like to know more about it. Um, the whole 27 Club thing is what keeps popping in my mind. You know, the 27 Club, all these group of musicians that all died at 27. Uh, Kurt okay. Cobain, Amy mm-hmm. Winehouse, Janis Joplin. There's loads. Jeff Buckley. Oh, all Jeff. 27? All 27. Never heard of this. Didn't really. No, I didn't know that. So if you Google the 27 mm. Club... Um, keep meaning to start a band called the 27 Club. it's a great name for a band Please don't do but that. with that meaning it's no. quite it's deep. a great name for a band <laughs> really for a dark. rock band that is an amazing name just not, I'm, I'm, I'm not having anything against that That's Dave Grohl might say something different <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe there's, lo- there's loads of me. Jimi Hendrix was another one they all died at 27 wow a bit of a phenomenon um, and I wonder why and, I'm, and there's been a lot of research on it but I, I wonder if it's anything to do with um you know, lack of fulfilment or, or people doubting you or whatever, or too much success. I know with Cobain, it was obviously too much success too quickly and stuff. I wonder if there's any constants through all that. But um, yeah, it's interesting to think whether there are creative people's traits or you know, personality mm. traits that are, are, are very specific to creatives, whatever it might be. Yeah. yeah. We'll see. We will. That's mm. the topic for another one. Oh, look, we've talked about a lot of creative stuff, actually. Thanks, Jill. You're welcome. Thanks I didn't for call me. you Bill. Thanks, well done. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I'd forgotten about that. Yeah, sorry. sorry <laughs> that again, no one else has. No, no. <laughs> no, no. It's going to follow me, follow me around now, isn't it? <laughs> now, it's on, now it's on, you know, it's been recorded on three cameras and on a podcast. Marvellous. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> thanks. Uh, but thanks, YouTube. thanks so much for coming in. <laughs> Um, I hope it's been interesting for you as well. It has, it's been great, thank you. And um, yeah, this episode will be number eight, if you're listening now. We've recorded out of order. We've done it out of order. Yeah, I've confused (laughs) myself. But um, it'll be out very very soon anyway, yeah. So if you're listening, it's already out. It's already out if you're listening. (laughs) It's pointless saying that. I'll take it all back. (laughs) Edit that bit out. (laughs) Right, thank you very much for listening. Jill, where can we we find you? Um, On Facebook, Cherry Aid Marketing. On LinkedIn, it's Jill Bishop. And Instagram's Cherry Aid Marketing as well. Fabulous. Go and check out Jill's work. She's Thank an you. expert at what she does. Um, and if you need help, if you are an SME and you need some help with your marketing, Jill is the person to speak to. Um, yeah. Where can people find us, Scott? They can find us on YouTube at The Creative Pursuit and on Instagram at northern.powerhouse.media. Oh, yeah, I forgot my website as well. What's your website? Oh, what's your website? Go on. Jerryaidmarketing.co.uk. Oh, <laughs> but the aid is AID. A-I-D. I forgot A-I-D. to say that as well. Well, you've done it now. Marvellous marketing. We'll put the links in the... Uh, <laughs> we'll put the... Yeah, good marketing there, Jill. Uh, uh, we'll stick the links in the description of the thanks. podcast. Uh, so yes. People can find it because you're rubbish at selling it. Um, but yeah, thanks very much. Thank you very much. And we'll see you again on the next episode.